Hello, and welcome to this month's episode of Bite Size Learning. This month, we are joined by visual artist Robin Scott. Hi, I'm Robin Scott. I'm a visual artist. I also work in ink and fibers paint. And today I'm going to talk to you about my tactile art, which is primarily meant to be experienced with the hands more so than the eyes. So when I started out, I worked a lot in pencil, color pencil, and ink. This is one of my drawings called In Plain Sight. And it is a very smooth drawing. It's just pen and ink with a coating of Mod Podge over it. And I love the idea of expressing my own experiences with disability visually, but I realize that not everybody can experience it the way that I do. For one of my shows last year, I created an accessibility piece. This was the first one that I did, so it was very much an experiment. I did this one the exact same dimension, 16 by 20, as the original and tried to recreate it as best as I could. For this one, I used uh, vegan leather, faux flowers, moss, um, faux snake skin, cork, and all sorts of things I thought people could experience more with their hands. For this show also, I'll add that um, I was told a lot of children visited the gallery, so we did hang the piece quite a bit lower so that uh, younger audiences could interact with it. My next experiment was called Downtown Mantio, which is a town in North Carolina. I used colored pencil as a visual element, and then I added of felt, twine, and also cork again for little tiles. And then I kind of settled on a media that I really liked, which was working with yarn. I discovered um, a large burlap sack that a coffee shop was going to throw away, so they donated it to me. And I decided to use the burlap as a canvas. And I kind of wove the yarn into the burlap. I also used acrylic paint and paint pens to give it extra texture. And this one here is a detail of the very first one that I did. The next one I called Around the Corner. Uh, this is a finished piece. I used yarn again, um, adding ribbon and paint as well. So my hope was that people could interact with these pieces and really have a tactile element if vision is not the way that they would want to interact with the work for whatever reason. Uh, this was another piece I called The Secret Garden. I added some beads to this one as well, and I really started having fun with it using the acrylic paint pens again. Um, and I still had the visual element that I want because that's really how I interact with my own art the best through color and line, but tried to add some other elements as well. Um, also feeling the canvas throughout the process to see how it felt to me. And here's a detail of that piece as well. And this is the most recent one that I just completed about a week ago. And um, I used again, ribbon, beads and yarn for this one and some paint pen as well. 
I found that I really liked working with florals because they seem to just work out well uh, with yarn as a media. When I gave a presentation to a local art group about letting audiences interact physically with my art, the reaction was somewhat negative. And I understand that because people spend so much time creating their artwork that, you know, somebody could accidentally drop it or interact with it in a way that it becomes damaged. So I thought about making a tactile feature for my shows and also recommending that to other people. So this would be a piece that, you know, you don't worry about if it gets ruined or if you need to redo parts of it because it's really specifically for the audience. For an upcoming show that I'm doing, I'm creating one that's eight by 10 inches. And hopefully the majority of audiences will be able to hold that and interact with that. And if they want to, they could take it with them throughout the show as they're um, enjoying the rest of the show, hopefully. So for example, if your preferred art form, it could be 2D, it could be 3D sculpture, it could be smooth like mine, it could be textured under glass, whatever it is, you can make an accessibility feature for your art shows. So for example, to give you an idea, um, let's say that you're an artist who paints large scale acrylic paintings and you like to do beach scenes. You don't necessarily you know, have to find a way to make your paint textured you could give the audience an idea of what it's like to be at the beach. So you might get a small eight by 10 canvas. You could glue sand, which you can find at a craft store. You could put little shells on there and glue them on as long as they're not sharp. Um, you could uh, bring some kind of sound system, portable sound system and offer the sounds of the ocean at your gallery opening. So for me, I'm doing tactile elements, but you could also work with sound or any other non-visual element to make your show more accessible. So another example, let's say that you do abstract weavings using very bright colors and lots of, lots of texture. Maybe you create a piece that the audience can interact with physically, along with an audio description of the piece, talking about the colors and the emotions that they're meant to communicate. For me and for a lot of artists, emotion and color go together hand in hand. So maybe for that piece, a description is a better way to go. So in summary, everybody's accessibility feature will be different based on their own style of art. It's also going to depend on any kind of support or lack of support that you may receive from your gallery space, knowing that if you're doing it 100% yourself, you might have a different goal than if the gallery space is offering you a lot of support. When I think about my journey for accessibility, I know I'm not at the end, I'm just at the beginning. And I do look at it as a journey, knowing that life is dynamic, art is dynamic, and hopefully things will get better as they go along. And just as a disclaimer, you know, avoid using anything um, sharp or overly rough in texture that could potentially hurt an audience member. And that's it. Well, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful work with us. I really loved all the colors and textures that we can even just see through the screen. I can't imagine actually being able to touch those. Um, our first question today is, 
Uh, what inspired you to get into creating these pieces? Um, so I actually attended uh, a workshop on Zoom, which was very accessible for me, yeah. on making your art more accessible. And I was getting some ideas from other artists and curators. And I really felt a little bummed out for a few minutes because I thought my art is so smooth. Uh, mm -hmm. What could I do beyond an image description that could could make my art more accessible? And I just started brainstorming and thinking about um, using something with texture as the actual art form, as opposed to just having something separate. And with that, I went to the craft store and just started experimenting. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, would you say that this tactile work is some of your favorite mediums to work in? Or do you have a favorite medium that you like to use? Um, I would say that I really love working with the yarn drawings the best. Mm -hmm. um, for me, my hands have become a little bit fiddly because of my joints. And so working with the glue was a little bit troublesome, but mm -hmm. with the yarn, it's so much fun. I can do it at home. Um, I can do really large scale or small scale. So it is one of my favorites at the moment. I think other than that, I tend to have a favorite media for maybe two to five years and then I get bored and then I move on. So at the moment, I'm also working in acrylics mm. um, for maybe three years or so. I was working only in pen and ink and I'm sure in another couple of years, it'll be something <laughs> else. Yeah, I'm very similar in that way. I like to bounce around and, you know, try, try everything, you know. Um, that's really cool, though. Working with yarn especially is really neat. And I'm, I'm sure working with yarn in a, a tactile way is fun because there's so many different textures in yarn itself. Like the variety that you can get is so vast. So that's really neat. Um, what advice do you have for artists who uh, want to start pursuing an accessible art practice? Like, what would you say is the, the best um, place to kind of start with that or what to keep in mind when you're just starting out? I would say, you know, for me, I felt kind of overwhelmed when I was starting out to try and like make it perfect all at once. And because I was doing it just by myself without really having a lot of guidance, I would say for people to just start small, um, do something that's established, such as an image description or an audio description, because there are resources available, and then kind of go from there and see, you know, how did the audience react to that? What would they need if that's different in a, another show? But just start small. And, and realize that it's a journey because uh, there's so many different types of audiences who might look at any any given person's work and then build on that and and kind of find your your way that way. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's really great. But yeah, that's all the questions we have for today. But thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you and seeing all of your work. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course.